morning, book friends, and welcome back to the Sort of Truth podcast. It's the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the Sort of Truth series with a tower of craft brew on the side. Those are fucking good. I don't know if you guys have ever had one of those before, but it's a giant, like, four-foot tower of beer that they bring to your table. It keeps it ice cold and... Ugh. I've actually never had one. It's the it's the coolest they, thing. They have them at sports bars. That's why. <laughs> oh, really yeah. There. We can get one at the Legion. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I got I got distracted. <laughs> I'm Nate. And I'm Jade. And today we're going to be getting into chapter 28 of Stone of Tears. Yep. It's just <gasps> a little guy, too. Yeah. It's a little tiny baby chapter. <laughs> so... No, it's not. It's got a big tower. <laughs> Not little. <laughs> Sounds a little defensive there. No. <laughs> My tower's big. <laughs> My mom told me so. What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <sighs> so the last chapter ended with Kaylin misguidedly praying that Richard would be kept warm. And uh, her prayers are answered, because when this chapter opens, Richard is ironically being plagued by the sun in a dry, desert-like place. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe she shouldn't have prayed for that, because it, he didn't need it. He yeah. It's cold. Bit much. Yeah. He mm -hmm. needs a wind. <laughs> Richard asks Verna what the deal is with the heat in the middle of winter, because he knows it should be cold right now. And she explains that the South experiences winter differently than the North does. That's why there's, you know, snowbirds are a thing. <laughs> like us. It's fucking warm. How long do you think it took Richard to realize that he wasn't cold as shit? Like they were walking and suddenly it was getting warmer, even though when he left, like it was winter still. You know what? I bet you it was one of the nights when he didn't have to make a fire <laughs> or when she didn't ask for one. Oh, yeah. Instead of being brutally cold, he's like, huh, that really wasn't quite so bad. Yeah. I could sleep on top of the blankets tonight. I remember thinking when I was very, very young, because we would go down to Florida right during the winter, and my parents had explained to me that, look, it doesn't snow in Florida. So I imagined this weird painted line on the road where it was just snowing and shit was falling <laughs> in Georgia. And then in Florida, magically, boom, nothing, just sunshine. And it was the weirdest thing to me. Like you could stand in Florida and laugh at the people who are getting snowed on? Yeah, like, <laughs> suckers. <laughs> but I didn't understand that that was even a thing. Like, why wouldn't it snow in Florida? I don't yeah. care if they're down there. It's fucking winter time. We lived in Michigan. That's all we knew for the winter. We got buried in snow, so. Yeah. Yeah, I can... <laughs> Picture Richard having the same kind of foredrawn conclusion. Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't actually get cold during the winter here, so it's fine. Like, we go swimming all the time. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck do we live up north? <laughs> <laughs> I also thought it was interesting that Richard is going south, and he knows, I mean, he knows stuff, but he's being schooled on a lot of, like, things that are just common knowledge down there. Meanwhile... The people from the Mud People's Village are going north ways, and they have to learn about different things like language and economics and fucking the cold. <laughs> yeah, or how we call soda pop. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's which just is like the correct. first thing you'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody else is just wrong. So that's fine. <laughs> I remember our boys getting called out when we were. Down in Florida, too. Or even on the way. I think we were actually uh, southern Indiana when they said, we got to grab pop. And someone said, y'all are from the north, ain't you? Because yeah. <laughs> just because they said pop. Yeah. We had been outed. Yeah, language is definitely super interesting. You can tell exactly where somebody is from based on, like, mm -hmm. just the syntax and all that fun stuff. <laughs> it's funny because you don't, you don't think about it. You know, sometimes I wonder uh, about the people who listen to this podcast, <laughs> if if it's super obvious to people where we are from, because... Because of our accents? Yeah, like, it's super normal to me. I don't know if the people who are listening... Because we have people who listen from all over the place. Yeah. If they listen and they're like, oh, that's America, but that's, like, Midwest America <laughs> for sure. <laughs> G's don't go on the ends of words, <laughs> and pop is definitely a thing. Right. <laughs> 
I feel like that's what sticks out mainly probably to other people, but I, I can't say. I would be interested to know. So getting back to the story at hand, Richard asks Verna where they are, and she tells him that they are in the Valley of the Lost, between the New World and the Old World. The New World is where he lives. They are going to the Old World. People who go into the valley don't return. What? (laughs) Well, like, hence, Valley of the Lost. Well, she told them this was going to be coming up. I guess I wasn't expecting this. No, I don't think he was either, but he did say, hey, in this next part, you're going to have to listen the fuck up, or we're not going to make it through. And, yeah, it's surprising, but she tried warning him. (laughs) Yeah. You are definitely going to want to listen to me going on from here. <laughs> because you would. Yeah, you would. And just like you were, there's there's guides, and this is, she is the guide. You mm-hmm. listen to the guide when you're traveling. <laughs> That's why you have the guide. It's funny because for different reasons, he will give resistance to Verna. And then in this, she's like, hey, for real, though, there's some pretty scary shit that could go on. He doesn't even hesitate. He's like, yep, you're the boss. What you need done? (laughs) And of course, the first question he asks is, why? Yeah, why don't people return? Like, that's a big question. (laughs) I'm going to need an answer on that before we keep going (laughs) forward. So the reason is that a long time ago, there was this wizard war. And wizards would spin off these fucking spells and they'd be shooting them at each other. But I guess unless it hit something or somebody or was in some way deactivated, it's still out there. Just kind of like out there. Yeah, it's definitely the way that they were making it sound. It sounds like these spells are in the form of like storms moving around. Right. This area that you get caught in the storm and you like it doesn't really say what. But it's not good. No. We assume the worst. Right. And I kind of feel like this is just like old bombs and grenades from old wars. I know they still have bombs and stuff from uh, the 1800s. And they're finding they have shitloads of them in Europe, like from the Second World War and shit. Yeah. There's whole fields where you just can't go because there's explosives and they can't possibly deactivate everything that's there. So you just kind of. Leave it the fuck alone. You do not go through there. That's that's what they're preparing to go through. Right. And they kind of explain that there's the Towers of Perdition, which were created, and it functions something like the boundary did in the New World, separating the lands, which it makes it kind of seem like these spells are caught in this weird line with the towers. So it's like a, I don't know, it's, it's similar to the boundary, but it's not the boundary. So between the towers would be a wall of sorts of magic that you couldn't actually see with the naked eye. Right. Magic of all sorts and makes and models, for lack of better words. Right. It's basically a fucking spider web of magic. Yeah. You go in, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. Dangerous. <laughs> There's got to be one, like, half... <laughs> Half frosted out tin sign with no trespassing written on one end of it. Like, yeah, I don't really want to go through there anyways, but I guess we have to. Yeah. Well, and Verna says that people with the gift can navigate through these spells in some way. And Richard asks, well, could a wizard get through it then? Because, like, they had the gift and they're super smart. They could figure it out, right? And she's like, no, they're basically made to kill wizards, so that wouldn't work. The tar- They would be the target of shit, yeah. so no. And somebody with no magic won't be able to see it, and so they'll walk right into the like the clouds of bad shit. So that's a no-go. And you can't fly over it, because it goes all the way up into the tippy top of the sky, and it goes all the way out into the water, we think. So sailing out is probably sailed. Like, she said she didn't know about that one, though. Yeah, it was a hard maybe. And I feel like somebody should try. It is also funny that she knew for sure the sky was out, but (laughs) but sailing is a maybe. Yeah, we definitely (laughs) can't fly over, but we don't know about going around. Like, oh, is somebody, like, going to check right now? (laughs) No, why? Would you didn't check? Like, yeah. why would you not check? Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard maybe. It, maybe it it's because somebody goes 
and they sail away and then they don't come back so they don't really know yeah they may have made it through but maybe that is why it's a maybe but other than that <laughs> i mean it would be pretty clear if somebody couldn't make it across by flying over they'd probably end up on the ground <laughs> they just fall yeah. really fast <laughs> like oh so that very clearly didn't work but if a ship goes down or something like that and they drowned then there's really no proof they're just gone yeah i guess but she did say somebody could follow you through which is basically what they're gonna do somebody could follow but they have to be super close and it did say that richard like looked behind him real quick and there was there was nobody there and he was like shit <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think about being followed until just right this second but i think he was hoping that like chase or somebody was gonna pop up and be like right behind him and he's like cool oh, yeah. you got me man we're good <laughs> damn they're not here <laughs> shit right but it's very specific rules about getting through there so immediately, Richard's hopes of being rescued are, like, dashed. He's like, shit, no Scarlet, no Zed, no Chase. I am fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. He wouldn't be able to call Scarlet either. I was thinking about Zed just not being able to get through because of him being, like, the most powerful wizard. Obviously, he's going to be the most targeted, but you can't fly over it either. So Scarlet is out. Yeah. And it, it had subtly mentioned the tooth. In the last chapter, he never had a chance to use Scarlet. No. So he still has that move in his back pocket. He's just kind of, you know, shit out of luck right now. Yeah, he hasn't had a good opportunity to use it that it's not going to be wasted yet. So he's like, cool. Because he knows that it's going to take her a hot second to get wherever he's going. Yeah. So, or wherever he is, I guess, currently. So you can't just be like, oh, I want to leave right now. Because if you're taken somewhere else, then she's going to show up where you were. Right? Yeah, wherever you were when you called her, I guess. Or maybe she could follow the... I don't know. Maybe it's a GPS thing. Either way, it's just... It's it's a better plan to wait. <laughs> yes. I'm just happy that Richard is now holding on to the Scarlet card because he was prepared to use it immediately when he got it. He's like, we'll just turn around and call her right now and then we'll get a ride to where we need to go and get the fuck out of, you know, where, with the mud people. Yeah. Now he has it, and he's like, yeah, but I don't just want to use it for just anything, so I'll just wait. <laughs> right. He, he's getting smarter about it. Yeah. Before, he was like, duck, take me to the back. It's fine. I can pass out. It's good. So after the towers were put up, some wizards were stuck on each side of the wall, which led to the wizards' war that Zed was talking about. I thought it was funny because it sounded like some wizards were stuck on one side of the wall like with the enemy and they didn't really get a say as to where they were when that happened right which is exactly i think why the second wizard's war happened because they were like shit i'm over here with the bad guys well fuck you we're still fighting <laughs> <laughs> shit is on yeah because before it was a fight between two groups of wizards who wanted to rule and then once they were both in the new world there was a group of wizards who wanted to rule, and then there was a group that Zed was part of that wanted wizards to, like, serve, not rule. Yeah. So, surprise, some of them went into hiding and then ended up into Hara, which is, you know, the Rawl family. They are the ones who ended up being the rulers. Yeah, which is funny because Richard's family doesn't seem like they would be cowards. Right. They, they don't seem like runners to me. <laughs> but like you said before, they ended up getting what they were after anyways. Like they they became the Rawl family. Yeah. The seat of power in Dahara. So maybe it wasn't such a cowardice move after all. It was a tactically thought out move. Hey, we're here. They can't get us. We're already at the place. Just sit on the chair and be the dude. Yeah, it was strategic in order to not die out. They went into hiding in order to, like, secure their their seat, I think. <laughs> it's like you go into hiding in an underground bunker or a castle. <laughs> like, no, let's go to that place. That seems a lot nicer than a hole in the ground, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> What'd you have in mind? The back of a shop? No, fuck no. We're going there. The biggest building. 